Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us. This Black History Month, we're taking a look at a controversial topic that's often overlooked, and that's colorism, which many view as a product of racism. Tonight, a look at what this issue is and why it's not only prevalent in the black community. I remember experiencing a lot of trauma for bullying, some of which I probably I won't share mm -hmm. on camera, but sure. it was it was a lot that I had to unpack even going into college and even as a grown adult. A pain that runs skin deep with wounds that often never quite heal. It was very conflicting to hear my mom say, oh my God, you're beautiful, you're dark skin, you're beautiful, and then go at school and people are like, Ooh, you ugly because nobody can see you. The experiences are traumatic for Jahi Mackey, who was first bullied for his dark skin when he was just five years old. I remember being picked on and teased because I was darker skinned by someone who was a high school senior. I didn't weigh the gravity of that until I became the age I am now. A similar experience for Dr. Sarah Webb, who says she was treated differently than other members of her family because of her skin tone. It impacts a person's self-esteem, their own sense of self-worth, how they view themselves. Colorism is the belief that darker skin is inferior to lighter skin tones and often happens within an ethnic group or community. People with the darkest skin tones are marginalized and pushed to the bottom of the social hierarchy. And people with lighter skin tones are elevated in the social hierarchy, they're given lighter skin is given more value in the larger culture. Dr. Sarah Webb from Baton Rouge is founder of Colorism Heal LLC. I do a lot of speaking simply because, as I mentioned, there are people who don't even really know about colorism. It's a small business that offers training and consulting services on colorism. She says the origins of colorism in the U.S. are as old as the antebellum South that can be traced back to slavery. The mixed race offspring of people who were slave owners, they were given more access to things like education, they were given more access to things like financial capital or financial status. Slavery and colonialism perpetuated the idea amongst people of all races that lighter skin are more European features, long straight hair, thin noses, light colored eyes, are inherently more valuable and inherently more beautiful. A belief that's been passed down from generation to generation, affecting social and economic outcomes of today. Research done by Catalyst in 2020 found women with darker skin tones were more likely to experience racism at work. In a 2018 study published by Harvard University, people of lighter hues were given less time behind bars than their darker skin counterparts. And even in the classroom, kids with darker skin are suspended more often. So it's something that happens across the globe on just about every continent. Which is why her agency focuses on bringing healing to all. I realized that there's still a gap that needed to be filled and so I wanted to do it more professionally in terms of offering people solutions and strategies for how they can address the issue. Including young men like Jahi. I think we need to call it in and also call it out. Who has come to love what he sees in the mirror but it took a while to get to a place of self-acceptance. It took me a while to, to reject mm -hmm. a lot of the negative ideas I had about colorism and lean into, well, my identity as a dark-skinned black man and lean more into the positive. He wishes more people would change the narrative on dark skin, focusing on a person's humanity instead of their hue so that all skin tones can be celebrated. Oftentimes we feel as though we are not enough or we're too much. You are enough. And then we have to say, I get to define who I actually am.